for most scientific research, the purpose is obvious. A cure for cancer, better solar cells, the role of childhood aerobic fitness in successful street crossing. Yes, that's published research. Knowledge that we can make use of. But dark matter? Supposedly, it makes up 80% of all matter in the universe. So what? If we can't do anything with it, who cares? Well, since you clicked on a video about dark matter, you probably do care at least a little bit. So today I have a new paper about a neat experiment that uses the entire planet Jupiter as a dark matter detector. I want to tell you how that works and then why I think that dark matter does matter. Astrophysicists often talk like the existence of dark matter is settled science, but I think this isn't so. They say we have a lot of evidence, but what does this evidence really tell us? It tells us that if we just use all the matter that we have measured on Earth, the stuff that's in the standard model of particle physics, and fill the universe with that, it's just incompatible with observations. Dark matter is one of the ways to fix this discrepancy between observations and predictions. These these particles would have to be mostly inert, interact very rarely and make themselves noticeable primarily by their gravitational pull. An alternative explanation is to change the laws of gravity. Or maybe we live in a computer simulation and that's the programmer's sense of humor. But how would you go about confirming that dark matter is really made of these particles? Well, you want them in a detector that goes ping. This should be possible because the dark matter particles, if they exist, which they may not, are supposedly all around us and Earth is flying through this dark matter soup, basically. It's just that the dark matter particles interact so rarely that we normally don't notice. So you need a very sensitive detector or a very big one. These dark matter detectors all work more or less the same. You take a big tank or a big chunk of material and monitor that very closely. What you're looking for is the rare interaction of the dark matter particles with that material. It could cause an atom to wiggle and that'd create a very slight heating. Or it might kick an electron into a higher energy orbital and when the electron drops back down, this emits a photon. Again, you can measure that. Now imagine having a detector the size of planet Jupiter. This is what the new experiment is about. They use data from the Cassini mission, which was actually studying Saturn, not Jupiter. But on the way to Saturn, it made a flyby on Jupiter because even satellites are better at multitasking than me. On that occasion, it measured what's going on in Jupiter's atmosphere, in particular the infrared emissions in the spectral window between 3 and 5 micrometers. These come from an odd molecule which is hydrogen 3 in the upper parts of the atmosphere. What happens there is that when sunlight falls onto the atmosphere, the ultraviolet light can split some of the hydrogen 2, which then sometimes forms hydrogen 3. This is kind of like in the upper atmosphere of Earth, oxygen 2 gets split and sometimes forms oxygen 3, which is ozone. The hydrogen 3 on Jupiter now, in contrast to most other molecules there, can absorb and emit in the infrared. But you expect this to only happen on the sunny side, by which I mean literally the side in the sun, nothing to do with eggs. You need sunlight because the energy to create those molecules needs to come from somewhere. The research Researchers then say that the hydrogen 3 could also be created by an interaction from dark matter. And then, since they haven't seen this infrared glow on the dark side, this tells us that there wasn't any dark matter there in appreciable amounts. So what the Jupiter detector does is to rule out many types of dark matter, namely all those which could have caused this infrared radiation, but didn't. It's actually a more sensitive probe than many Earth-based experiments would be. This means that just by analyzing the Jupiter data, they've probably killed a whole bunch of bigger detector designs. Take that, particle physicists. That said, 
let me tell you why I think dark matter matters. This isn't research that will lead to practical applications in 10 years or 100 years and maybe not even 1000 years. Add some zeros if you feel like it. But if we ever want to become a space traveling species, and I surely hope we will, we need to understand what's going on out there in the cosmos. We'll need to know whether we have to plow our way through clouds of dark matter or whether maybe gravity works differently. Yes, that's a long time off. But what's the point of enduring the present if not to make the future better? And sometimes I hope when we finally figure out what dark matter is, we get a cosmic pop-up saying, quest completed. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant.org. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And there are adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. Sounds good? I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.